Hi everyone! Today I'm going to talk to you about what makes a bird a bird. What do birds have that no other organism has? That's right, we're going to talk about feathers, which, in my opinion, are one of the coolest and more useful structures nature has to offer. First, let's discuss what purpose the feathers serve. Why have feathers? How do a bird's feathers help it survive? Do they aid in flight, help camouflage the bird, provide insulation, or are they used for display? For weatherproofing? The answer is yes to all of the above. Bird feathers have many different functions and for that reason are essential for the bird's survival. What I think is super interesting is that some feather functions remain a mystery. For example, the feather tufts on the heads of owls like the great horned owl and the eastern screech owl are often mistaken for ears. However, these feathers are completely separate from the ear and do not help owls hear. So we know they are not for hearing, yet there is no scientific consensus on the function of these tufts. Some have proposed that the horns are for display. Others have suggested that owls use them for more complete camouflage while roosting in daylight. But other functions are also possible, and no one has yet done a detailed study to find out. Will the mystery ever be solved? Before we can dive into the different types of feathers and the functions they serve, we need to make sure to understand feather anatomy or the basic structure of a feather and its parts. A feather is a lightweight, durable structure made mostly of keratin, similar to our fingernails. The two main parts of the feather are the shaft and the vein. The shaft is the main central support that runs the length of the feather. The vein is the part of the feather that unzips and rezips. The veins give the feather its overall shape. The part of the shaft where the veins are located is called the rachis. The exposed base of the shaft is called the quill or calamus. The vein is composed of structures called barbs, with barbules that connect the barbs together and barbacils, which are tiny hooks that connect the barbules together. This interlocking structure acts like Velcro or a zipper to create a surface while still maintaining some flexibility. This is important for each feather type's function. Some feathers look fluffy because they have a loosely arranged, plumaceous microstructure with flexible barbs and relatively long barbie wools that trap air close to the bird's warm body. Other feathers are more pinaceous, meaning they are more stiff and mostly flat, with microscopic hooks on the barbie wools that interlock to form a wind and waterproof barrier that allows birds to fly and stay dry. Many feathers have both fluffy, plumaceous regions and more structured, pinaceous regions. Each feather type's rachis, barbs, and barbules are going to look and work differently to serve different purposes for the bird. Feathers fall into one of seven broad categories based on their structure and location on the bird's body. The first feather type we are going to discuss are wing feathers, also called remiges. These feathers are specialized for flight and are probably what most people think of when they think of feathers. The wing feathers are characterized by uniform, windproof surfaces, or veins, on either side of the central shaft that are created by an interlocking microstructure of barbs and barbules, like Velcro. This structure allows for a surface over which air can move, creating lift for the bird and aiding in flight. Wing feathers are also characterized by having asymmetric veins with a shorter, less flexible leading edge that prevents mid-air twisting. Most tail feathers, or retroces, feature an interlocking microstructure similar to wing feathers. Arranged in a fan shape on the bird's body, these feathers support precision steering in flight. However, some birds, like the peacock, tail feathers have evolved into showy ornaments that are useless in flight but make the bird look super pretty. Contour feathers are what you see covering the bird's body and streamlining its shape. Arranged in an overlapping pattern like shingles, the waterproof tips are exposed to the elements and the fluffy bases are tucked close to the body. Sometimes brilliantly colored or uniformly drab, 
Contour feathers can also help the bird show off or stay camouflaged. Contour feathers on the wing, called coverts, shape it into an efficient airfoil by smoothing over the region where the flight feathers attach to the bone. Contour feathers are the most numerous feathers on the bird's body, and as stated before, have many different purposes. Mostly hidden beneath other feathers on the body, semi-plumes have a developed central rachis, but no hooks on the barbules, creating a fluffy, insulating structure. Similar to semi-plumes with an even looser branching structure but little or no central rachis, down feathers are relatively short and positioned closest to the body where they trap body heat. Short, simple feathers with very few barbs, phyllo plumes function like a mammal's whiskers to sense the position of the contour feathers. Bristles are the simplest feathers, with a stiff rachis that usually lacks barbed branches most commonly found on the head, bristles may protect the bird's eyes and face. And those are the seven broad types of feathers, each type having a unique structure that allows it to serve different purposes that help the bird survive. But do the feathers last forever? Can birds grow new feathers? Let's answer these questions by discussing feather growth and molt patterns. Feathers are non-living structures that cannot repair themselves when damaged. Because a healthy and functional feather coat is critical to survival, each year birds shed their old feathers and then grow a whole new set. This process is called molting, and it is carefully timed so that the feathers are shed and regenerated in turn over a period of weeks so the bird can maintain its protective outer layer and ability to fly. Exactly when and how many feathers a bird molts is different depending on species. A variety of factors may play a part, such as if and when that species migrates and when they end their breeding season. And some can look quite funky as they are going through molt. It is quite an energy draining process. Throughout the year, the bird maintains its mature feathers through regular care or preening. Whenever the barbules become disturbed, the bird uses its beak to carefully guide them back into place. By the following molt season, Many of the bird's feathers have experienced enough wear and tear that preening can no longer maintain their structure. So it's a good thing they are able to grow a completely new set. The diversity in feathers comes from the evolution of small modifications in the basic structure to serve different functions. Flight feathers, for example, with their intricate microstructure are an impressive example of natural engineering. But how do they evolve? From the fossil record, we know that birds evolved from dinosaurs, some of which had feathers. What? I know, right? Birds are technically dinosaurs. Mind blown. But how? Why? Guess you will just have to check out the rest of the lesson to find out. Bye for now.